uh, I'm Felix. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the non-parametric nonlinear model reduction for slow fast SDEs near manifolds. Uh, this is collaboration with uh, Sichang and Morrow at Johns Hopkins. Um, so, um, so I have a shorter talk. Um, if you are interested, please uh, so please watch the shorter talk. Um, so I'm so in shorter talk. I give a uh, uh, so brief introduction and some motivation and small examples. Uh, for this talk, I will give more detailed uh, information of this work. Um, so again, the system that we consider is a slow fast system of SDEs as specified as follows. <coughs> so the X is the fast mode and the Y is the slow mode. Uh, so usually the fast mode is left in much bigger dimensions in the uh, capital D minus small d, and the small uh, mode lives in small dimension of small d. Um, here, this epsilon is a very small parameter. Um, so if we look at the right-hand side, uh, so the equation is very stiff. So because the right-hand side is, so it's order of 1 over, it's one over uh, so epsilon, uh, so, you need, so once you uh, simulate numerically, it has to take a very tiny um, time step to make sure your numerical scheme is stable. Um, and also it has a curse of dimensionality. As I said, the fast mode is so live in much bigger dimension. So of course, I mentioned um, in the shorter talk uh, with some out, so assumptions, uh, there is a theorem that to guarantee uh, there exists in very manifold and your dynamics will be fluctuating around the so in very manifold. Um, so as I said, if we can find the reduced dynamics um, on the invariant manifold, that we can like it, so we can significantly uh, so reduce our dimensions into small d dimensions, and also the system, uh, I mean, I mean the effective dynamics, so it doesn't have one over epsilon on my right hand side, and we can take a much bigger time step um, that will solve the stiffness problem. So if we look at the uh, so this a little bit into detail, and we can so define the deviation of the sample path from invariant manifold as you can see. Um, so this uh, so like so we can take a shorter um, uh, so change of coordinate from x y to c or y, and we are going to take the linear approximation on c, and we can show this c is I mean the first order approximation. Uh, shows the C follows an OE process, einstein wollenbach process. It's a linear process. Uh, so basically, says the C, uh, so deviations follow a Gaussian process. Uh, so Gaussian, uh, so follow Gaussian distributions uh, with a mean of zero, and uh, and we can calculate the covariance matrix. Okay, and also this C, well, quickly relaxed it's because the right hand side has has one over epsilon. It will like relax to equilibrium at at order of time order of epsilon. Okay, so this is very very important because we want this fast mode to be, I mean, relax onto the invariant manifold. Then, uh, then, then, so, so then, uh, so the only thing that is remaining is the dynamics on the slow manifold. And uh, so, like, we can write down the effective drift and effect diffusions by averaging uh, of this quasi stationary. Um, so distribution, which is exactly, as I said, is so the Gaussian distributions of the C as as follows. So the thing is, um, we want to find out this uh, so equation three uh, from the data. So uh, if we uh, if so if we have this information, I'm going to put back and. Um, into the full system of x and y because that's what we can observe from so from a simulation what you can as observe is only um, in the full space c okay you, so you don't know which one is fast you don't know which one is slow um, so if we if we convert into its Ito's form we have the following so so equations and you can see um, so this is our I mean, effective drift, and this is, 
our effective coefficient, like subdiffusion coefficient, which is given as follows. Uh, this B drift um, has this eto terms because previously I'm using like so so so, so, so version of SDE, but uh, once we convert it to eto form, that would, uh, so there is additional eto uh, term into this drift. Uh, for this fast uh, mode, and it's expressed as the followings. And we know this Kc is mean zero, and has some um, uh, has some fixed covariance matrix at the equilibrium. And also this matrix here, uh, this partial y x bar and identity here, is I mean the span of this matrix is 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 exactly the tangent space of the invariant manifold. So we can use this information um, to get and to and to get a piece of the uh, so tangent space, I'm going to glue them so later on. Um, if we really look at that um, pictures carefully, that's a slice of the invariant manifold and with the trajectories here. Um, so you can see this is our effective drift right here, the uh, so green arrows. This green arrow doesn't lie um, tangent with invariant manifold just because of this Eto's form. And you cannot project this effective direction onto the invariant manifold and claim that's your um, Stratonovich drift because this Eto term right here is not orthogonal um, with, uh, so with a tangent space at all. So there's no easy way to separate these two terms. And uh, um, so this uh, so blue arrow is the is the fast direction of the fast mode, and you can see um, so the normal direction of um, so tangent so space is on the purple arrow. So one particular important observation is uh, this fast direction is not necessary to be orthogonal with the tangent space of the invariant manifold. Okay, so this is a very key key thing because later on. Uh, so I need to project the point that is away from invariant manifold back to onto the invariant manifold. So, so we cannot using the orthogonal projection. It just because if you it, so because of the fast direction is not really orthogonal with that. So we have to take the projection like oblique super so, uh, so, uh, so projections back to. The invariant manifold. So we need to find out this um, so projection from the data as well. So once we have this observation, um, then we can um, find out the mean and the covariance of these short path. So basically, what you're going to do is you are going to uh, fix an initial point, and you and you are going to run uh, a very so a lot of short path and n short path is, um, and that's what you will see from the from the um, so from the uh, so movie here. That's the point cloud start to grow uh, from zero to uh, like from zero to zero point one. Uh, so you can see um, in so in the vertical direction, which is in our direction. Um, it will reach the equilibrium about like 0 0.05 second and the I mean the magnitude of this point cloud will reach the equilibrium so that's the curvy linear cylinder so examples um, I mentioned in the short talk um, so that's I mean so that art direction is the fast um, mode uh, so on, the other, on the other hand uh, the theta and the phi are the slow mode, and it will start to grow uh, slowly, um, and diffuse out slowly along the theta and the phi so directions. Okay, so so like that's how we um, so generate these. Uh, I mean, so 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 what we're going to do is we're going to utilize these short like trajectories by taking the time dependent mean and the time time-dependent covariance matrix mt and the c, c of t and also up to the scale separations um, so 
In fact, we can write up the um, so the expression for this mean and the covariance as follows. This mean can be written as a as, as a linear so model um, as follows at the time scale of separations. This intercept is 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 exactly the point on the invariant manifold, and this b of z is exactly the drift. Is the effective drift that we mentioned uh, previously, right here. So here we need to assume this drift is almost um, constant in the span of time scale separations, which is a kind of assumption that you need to impose on a slow, um, like slow variable. The drift it like doesn't change that much at that time scale, uh, and the same as the diffusion. I mean, this is also a linear model up to, um, I mean, so epsilon orders. Uh, it will have, so the, so the diffusion matrix has two parts. The first one is a constant contribution coming from the fast mode, which is right here is on the art direction. And then we have a, a constant diffusion coming from the slow manifold. Uh, this is contributed by lambda times of t, right? So, so you can think about. So here are constant diffusions. Then, then the, then the diffusion matrix grows linearly. So this lambda is can be, uh, so can be, can be, can be expressed as H H transpose. So if we look at this linear model carefully, in fact, it already tells me two very very important things. Is one is geometry, the second one is dynamics. So, so the dynamics are pretty simple. We have the drift term that is B and the diffusion matrix of the lambda, which is a, it's a very important two things to estimate. And and both that work so can be estimated by I mean simple linear so regression. And the second thing that we hear is the geometry. So the geometry is uh, I mean, the first thing that we have is the landmark. So, the, so the landmark is given at, is in this point, uh, and also the tangent space um, is also being given uh, by the span of h of z. So, so we have a landmark, we have a tangent space. Um, so locally, we already have a good, I mean, so descriptions of this this invariant manifold. Um, in in addition of these um, things, we need to assume the system is diffusion dominated. Um, this is quite a technical thing. Is the so the re, uh, so so a rough idea is I need to assume my h here is uh, so the norm of h is much much bigger than the norm of b. Okay, so so the idea uh, for this diffusion dominated is I can make sure um, I can use uh, this uh, indirect graph to approximate um, these landmark. Uh, I mean, and to build the graph and approximate the dynamics. So, it, it's in order to using this kind of indirect graph argument, I have to make sure uh, the diffusion is dominated in this system. I mean, fortunately, there are many um, system are diffusion dominated. Even with over damp Langevin, uh, we can argue many systems are. Uh, truly fulfill this kind of categories. Okay. Um, so, so in fact, we can using the estimating as so estimated mean and estimate covariance, as I said. Um, but so another thing is we need to make sure. Uh, so we are at the range of the uh, time scale separations, which is tau min to tau max right here. So we need to plot these two quantities, the norm of the mean, uh, I mean the norm of the estimate mean and the trace of estimate covariance. So, um, so once we plot these two things out, we need to find out the, um, so the linear region of these two, uh, two quantities and this time, I mean, so linear region it can be our um, scale of separations that we can using this time window to learn uh, and to learn the driven diffusions. Okay, so this is a very standard uh, so linear models uh, so, uh, so argument. So these are the way to, I mean, find out the 
drift and diffusions by taking uh, an so by finding the slopes of these two linear models. Um, but however, this lambda n uh, hat is not really low dimensional. Um, so just taking that, it's almost low dimensional. It's almost like uh, so rank and rank of d. Um, but we still need to strictly enforce that. So basically, we need to do some uh, like truncated SVD and truncate up to uh, small of d, right? And remember, so probably I didn't uh, mention that here is this lambda of z has a rank of small d, and the rank of this gamma has the uh, so has the rank of big d minus small d. And the same as gamma here, you have to do projections up to. Uh, I mean to d minus d's. So in fact, if you find the singular values for this lambda n, you will find that most of significant um, or the dominant singular values are d's, and the other are just like close to zero. And this is also a good way to tell like how many dimensions of your invariant manifold is. Okay. So, so another question is uh, the concentration inequalities. Um, so the question is how how many short trajectories that we needed to make sure this relative error for your estimate terms are within epsilon hat I mean relative error. So Sichuan and I were able to find out this um, concentration inequalities that being uh, like scale as follows. Um, there is additional term of df is basically the dimension of the fast variable with large fluctuations. So these are really uh, put into the uh, so considerations. So there are some like fast variable that fluctuate very small around invariant manifold. It turns out that doesn't matter. What really matters is what uh, so we have, um, like the component has a very large fluctuations. Okay. Uh, so with this, we can um, kind of uh, give us some uh, order of guidance on how many short trajectories that we needed uh, to have a very good quality of our, uh, I mean, landmarks and simulators. Okay, so we have some proofs here. Um, it will be in the paper as well. So, um, so then, so so we have that, and we're going to um, so combine everything together with the geometry. So we have the dynamics and also we need to construct the sketch of the invariant manifold with all these kind of dynamical quantities. And of course the landmark is, is the intercept of this um, uh, linear model of the mean and the local tangent space is the column span of this slow directions um, and the shifted uh, to the landmark. And also we need to um, to define the non-orthogonal projections onto the local tangent plane. So basically, uh, the orthogonal projection will not work. It's just because my fast mode is, so as I said, is not really orthogonal to the invariant manifold. We need to, I mean, define the right projections. So why this is really matter is because when we trying to simulate later on um, with global error accumulating, there's no guarantee your point will be sit on your invariant manifold. It might be like start to like flying off. So that's why you need to do these projections and make sure your point is really, I mean, restrained on the invariant manifold. And also um, on this invariant manifold, we can define the distance. So first we need to define the local Malahonobis distance. So this is the like very standard diffusion distance uh, but we are constrained into uh, like the locally, so like any point in, so that is far away from, I mean the landmark. It, so I will consider it as infinities. Um, but this is not really a distance. I mean, so this is not really a metric it's because they are not symmetric. So that's why we need to like like symmet like uh, so symmetrize by taking the maximum of, uh, I mean the opposite one. But this is still not a distance. I, I mean, this is a, something called semi-metric because the um, the triangular inequality has to be relaxed by the constant of C of P. It's like C of rho. 
In fact, uh, we have this um, uh, bound or like I mean estimation of C a row. Um, so f like from the system, so it will be um, like so clearly being so estimated here. Um, so like this C or row is very important because when we construct the atlas of the environment for this C or row, we're taking to the count. Um, and also the last one and also very very important part is our building block to tiling up the um, I mean variable manifold. So the building block here is square root tau neighborhood of the landmark, which you can really think about. This is a diffusion distance, but within like square root of tau. Um, so this, I mean, so like, so the shape of this B is really an ellipse. Like if it is two D, if it is n dimension, it is just, so it will be an it's so ellipsoid. So these kind of ellipsoid. Uh, will tile up the same dimension or in very so manifold as one by one and fill up the whole space. Okay, but of course, uh, how we're going to do it? Um, so previously, I already mentioned everything locally, so I didn't trying to glue them or uh, like talk about uh, like everything globally. So we have a very good local estimation. Of the geometry, we have a very good local estimation of dynamics. Now we are so we need to glue these piece by piece and make sure it can have very good representation of the invariant manifold. Okay, so so the way is um, to start with is we have a square root of tau over two neighborhood of landmarks that covers the invariant manifold. So basically, so these building blocks. Of tau over two, or, I mean, say already covers. I mean, so the invariant manifold. Uh, so the second so step is we are going to remove uh, the landmarks that is overcrowded. So we don't want to have too many landmarks to have like things that like uh, so getting uh, so way too close. We need to think as so so we need to make sure these landmarks are well separated. So we are. Uh, Remove the landmarks are uh, less than one minus one over square root two of tau, like square root tau here, of the uh, so of our so with so with our diff so definition of distance. If we do these two steps, and we have the following three properties, these three prop so properties are very very important. First thing is trivial because we remove the so landmarks that is. Too close, and uh, we avoid overcrowding, and these landmarks are well separated. Uh, the second thing is uh, we no longer have a square root of tau over two covering. However, we have a C of row cover, which basic says um, for any. Uh, I mean, so 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 for I mean for any z um, on the invariant manifold, there is a landmark such that that the distance is is within a. Uh, C of rho times square root of tau. And the, the third property is all these landmarks are well distributed. So, so what does that mean is um, for each landmark there's another so landmark L prime such that their distance are, are within two times C C rho square and uh, square root of tau. So so basically if you're using this number as your um, I mean as your uh, like threshold, and to and to build your like graph, and each like landmark will be your node, and you and you can be sure um, your landmarks are well connected, right? So they're all connected because, and I have a guarantee one, uh, so one network, uh, so like one, uh, so what, uh, so there's no like landmarks that are being isolated. Okay, uh, but there is a big uh, a problem. Is this number one? Is I'm mean, assumption is very very strong. I need to sample a lot a lot of landmarks to cover this invariant manifold, and I need to throw out a lot of lot of I mean so landmarks here to make sure it's not overcrowding. So this is not efficient at all, right? So that's why we want to. Um, imposing something called exploration mode to make sure we can sample the point 
on the invariant manifold efficiently. So we don't need to throw out a lot of um, so landmarks. Okay, so, so I will like briefly mention this a little bit later. So, so before that, I want to talk about something on the simulation, right? Because we have a very good estimation on this landmark, but what if the point that is not on the landmark? In fact, uh, what we can do is we can using the nearest landmark, so like say this is my current point here, uh, which is blue, uh, like the purple one, say this, um, I mean, so red dot is the nearest landmark, and what you are going to do is you are going to ask what is your neighbors of this nearest landmark, and what, you, and what you're going to do is you are going to calculate the local Malahom Nobis distance with this purple point, I mean, so relative to these neighbors and it's like net, and also with so its landmarks. Then I'm going to using the weight of exponential of minus distance. So basically, so the further you are, uh, the less weight you have, right? So this is very, very, um, I'm intuitive. If you are very close, I'm going to put a very, um, so a lot of weight here, and um, I'm going to using this weight and uh, average to to interpret the drift diffusions on this point of the current point. And also, if your point, the current point, is not exactly on the invariant manifold, I so what I'm going to do is I'm going to project your um, your current point. Uh, also weighted to project with all these information that I have and I project back to these tangent plane but I'm going to weight it um, with the weight so that is given as follows so basically we will get the effective uh, current point with the corresponding drift and corresponding diffusions okay so here I still need to do some uh, projections with the rank of D to make sure everything is still in in the small D dimensions so like because once you do this performance it's not necessary to be uh, lower rank anymore okay, with being said like that uh, so you can run your Atlas simulations very very quick um, with Atlas like time step so which is in the I mean so time step of of time scale relaxation tau I mean like in the curvilinear examples that's about uh, 200 times bigger right so this is very uh, so like and the, so the system is I mean so no longer that stiff you can take much much bigger time step to run and without losing much uh, I mean accuracy so you can see this is partially Explored atlas on I mean for this like very manifold um, So I start my like trajectories in this 3d dimension, which is in so in a hot so, so in a hot So in the higher like dimensions and my invariant manifold is two-dimensional um, so so if it is in the um, like cover of these neighborhoods I will using this auto simulator, um, then it will be very very fast. Once it gets out to the point right here, I mean this red dot here, and I find out my diffusion distance at all points compared like to its neighbors, they are all bigger than square root of tau. So what does that mean? Is my current point is out of the cover of the so neighborhood. So what you're going to do is you are going to set this current point as a new initial conditions and go back to the algorithm that we have to learn the new landmark and put this onto our like new, I mean so 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 new uh, so landmark that I'm going to append the new neighborhood into this um, uh, set of the landmarks uh, so set of uh, so neighborhoods of the landmarks. So, like gradually, you are going to tiling up this invariant manifold, and gradually, and finally, um, if you are run very very long trajectories, 
and you find out your system just being um, covered by by the neighborhood and there's no new landmarks will be um, uh, be created anymore then you're going to stop okay so and you claim uh, you almost I mean in in high probability you almost um, finish the tiling so maybe there is some little point that is very rarely visited uh, never being discovered but that's okay um, so so with a very high chances you are and you have explored uh, well enough on this invariant manifold but remember everything is in the time step of the atlas time step which is much much bigger than the original time step so that's the second example that I want to talk it's the oscillating half moon um, this I mean so example has been uh, discussed many times in Yanni, uh, like so in, uh, so in Yanni's paper, um, 2009 and 2000, uh, 2016. So the idea is, I mean, this is uh, so like slightly variation from uh, so Yanni's original idea, but uh, what we have is um, we have the dynamics of theta and r um, that being separated. Uh, theta is the angle dynamics, is double well dynamics, uh, and R is so the radius di like dynamics is a just simple or I mean OU process. But in the R direction, it's a fast, it's a very fast, like it's sort of quick, I mean quick, so quick fluctuating around this R equal to one. Uh, theta is a double well, it's a slow dynamics. But uh, but the tricky things is I'm going to take this nonlinear transformation and it makes r and theta together um, so it's like right here if you look at the trajectory it, so it doesn't oscillate linearly around uh, the r direction it just oscillate nonlinearly um, like it is um, so this will like introduce some like more difficulties to test something with um, like like how this like nonlinear effect kicks in, and uh, how does that behave? And the, so the angle dynamics, as I said, is a double well has two well on the pi over two and the minus pi over two. Okay. So if we look this uh, thing, in fact, our atlas can build up this manifold very well. It's exactly r equal to one, um, and these black dots are. Are like landmarks and these red lines are uh, so like tangent space and uh, since this tangent space is to so I mean so tiny once I glue them together it really looks like um, a circle um, these arrows are effective drift and of course with the Ito terms you can see this I mean these area are not perfectly zero it has some Ito contributions over there um, I mean, there's something interesting here that is uh, the small, I mean, the well has been shifted. Like, because I have some, like, non-orthogonal, uh, like, contributions. So, so the smallest, I mean, so the well, I mean, I mean, the well is a little bit slightly uh, rotate counterclockwise. Uh, the well, I mean, will be here instead of pi over 2. And the well will be here instead of minus pi over two. Okay, so that's why if you run the atlas simulator with our projection, I mean non-orthogonal projection, it will bring back uh, to the true well. Was I mean? So if you look this line of red of non-orthogonal obliquid so projection, you will find out the I mean the peak is exactly on the pi over two. Okay, so it matches with original simulator. However, if you take the orthogonal projections, right? So it turns out the peak is not on the pi over two. It will be shifted by um, by a little bit. So basically, this is very very interesting and show the importance of this non-orthogonal projections. 
Okay, so if you don't take the projection right, you won't get the right dynamics. So if you only look at this I'm mean, Atlas simulator, you will see, oh so wait a minute, I'm so my point is turns out it, it so it's a bit shifted. I mean the well is a bit shifted. But not really once you see your like so, like simulate dynamics because you are also taking like non-orthogonal projections. So basically if you are somewhere here, it will be projected to pi over two effectively. So if you're using this non-orthogonal projections at each time step, you will be correctly um, like replicate the dynamics of the original simulator. And also let's look at the uh, mean first passenger time, which is a very key important quantities to, uh, and to check the quality of your simulator. And you'll find out the Atlas simulator is almost like 3% error um, with, with the original simulator. And the, the time is, I mean, relatively small. I would say it's like two-thirds of the simulating time of the original simulator. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty good. Uh, the last, I mean, the last example is, is slightly more complicated. It's the butene model, and the butene has a four carbon groups. And the idea here is I'm going to remove some of the... Uh, like restrictions, I mean, like uh, sort of like rotation invariance, such as such. So I'm going to fix some of the positions into zeros, some directions into zeros. If you remove all these invariant, there so like effectively there are only six degree of freedoms. Um, so the potential I'm going to use is uh, three potential. One is bound potential, which is basically the I mean the distance w with like each carbon group and also I have a bond angle which is like I mean this vector versus I mean this vector the bond angle like this and the third one is torsion uh, it's basically it's the dihedral angles of this red plane and the purple plane right so these like these angles will like I mean fluctuate in the dynamics it's pretty well known this phi or the dihedral angle is the slowest dynamics, uh, I mean, like slowest variables, and what is governing the uh, long time behavior of the booting dynamics is by this dihedral angles right here. Um, I'm going to using the overdamped Langevin dynamics um, to just to start. It's very simple dynamics. Just take the partial derivative with respect to all these six dimensions, um, and you will get this um, like dynamics equations. So note this dynamics is not exactly fit to to our setup. It's because we have I mean so my right hand side uh, it's on my right hand side in the diffusion part. It also have a one over epsilon something like that. So it doesn't have that in these cases, but our algorithm can still uh, tackle these kind of system that is not perfectly aligned with um, our models. If you like look things a little bit carefully and this Q1, Q2, Q3 are in the same plane and I mean so this plane doesn't like change at all. What, so what is really changed is this like red plane uh, and the, what is really governing this plane as turns out is to I mean for these two ang like I mean angle uh, like values x4 and se4. So these two values uh, will come and will take into I mean part this like torsion uh, like potentials and to determine this phi it is. I mean this phi value is totally determined by the x4 and the z4 here in this setup. Okay. Um, so if you're using Tika, which is a very popular uh, method it will also identify this x4 and z4 for you. So, I mean, just basic tells you that, I mean, x4 and z4 are very important uh, parameter, uh, sorry, the variable, you should, like, using these two variable to, and to build up your reduced dynamics. Okay, so, so that's why I'm going to plot everything into x4 and z4. But if you look the scatter point on this, it is not exactly, I would say, two-dimensional, 
it just because it has some like fluctuation around the in like in very manifold so it has some thickness here um, on the very manifold uh, so if we do the plot of trace and the mean uh, like, so, so sorry the trace of this covariance and the norm of mean you will find that the uh, so linear region is about uh, four times uh, 10 to the 5 and 5 times 10 to the 5 that's about 40 uh, 40 delta t and 50 delta t okay so that's the time um, like the uh, so scale of separations but if we look the um, singular values of this tau lambda thing uh, if we look the lambda which is I mean the most important part the slow so the slow dynamics you will find out a significant tells you okay it, so it should be one dimensional um, so because the second third is significantly less and if we look at the tau which is the fast dynamics it seemed to me maybe the like fast dynamics with large fluctuation should be two and the rest of the I mean so dynamics are like kind of fast dynamics but with small relatively small fluctuations um, however if we look the just look at the uh, singular value for the covariance matrix um, you can and you can argue this is one dimensional or maybe three dimensional it depends like um, how you argue because the second or third is only like uh, half of the first one so like I mean this is not like super significant here so you can argue this is one dimensional or three dimensional but here in terms of our slow dynamics this is very very like significant I think like for this one it's like uh, so six or seven uh, times differences here so you can like uh, affirmatively say this is one dimension dynamics um, this is also a plot of uh, in in the domain of x4 and z4 and you can find out uh, this um, so like so like this is a configuration of so like, like something called a trans which is basically these two um, carbons are being like uh, like like the mo so like the most separated part and these two are the gouge state um, so I mean this is much much closer here uh, so the transition with I mean like gouge to trans and the gouge to trans and the gouge to gouge right so, and this is the more stable part because uh, so these two carbon are as a group um like more less so are, so are more separated than the uh, so these two ones. And I also plot this drift, and you can see I have an eto term like eto's effect here. This uh, drift direction doesn't perfectly tangent to the invariant manifold. Okay, I also plot, and also like any so using this. Um, so landmarks and build up the Markov state models and once I build up the Markov state models and I can find the first couple tangent uh, uh, eigen modes and you can see these eigen modes can um, can I get I mean identify these wells very well um, and I can use these um, eigen modes to separate these um, so landmarks and to, and and to tell me so which and which well or which meta stability states lies in. Okay, so that's basically for the routine. Last thing I want to show is the mean first passing time problem. Um, and you can see, um, since this time, uh, the, I mean, the time scale separation is not very strong. If you look at that, that's about like 40 times of delta t. Uh, I mean, so if you look at the my, so my previous um, one uh, in the curvy linear that's about 200 I mean delta T um, so so you can see this atlas simulator is not uh, super like I mean super efficient compared to the original simulator is slightly smaller but if we look at the quality of our simulator it's really really good it's within like three to five percent of of that uh, I mean, in all trans or gouge state, um, so that's already been very, very uh, like successful for our Atlas simulator. So, 
in fact, if you're using all atom dynamics instead of this, like I mean, so like this, this, this so dynamics of booting is already severely um, simplified. If you're using like include these hydrogen things, it will be much much more complicated. Um, but uh, our Atlas uh, like method can do as equally good as it is. Um, so in that case, is my Atlas simulator will be much much faster than the original simulator. But this time we only beat by limits maybe like 30%. Okay. Um, so future work, I want to test a, a bigger molecules like LNE stuff, um, which people use a lot. And uh, the second thing is I want to like relax the, the diffusion dominate assumption. The reason of this diffusion dominate assumption is the key to build up the undirected graph. If we have some drifted dominant things, we have to use some direct graph, which is untouched territories in the diffusion, like it's manifold learning things. Um, that's the thing that I, I always keep in mind because in many dynamics, for example, we have a stochastic uh, oscillations, it has a very strong drift. Uh, so that's a thing we want to accommodate with as well. Uh, and also the third things I want to do later is I want to do quadratic approximation instead of the, the linear pro I mean so linear approximation. Right now I'm using the like tangent plane to approximate uh, the manifold. But if your manifold is pretty rough, uh, it might not be a good idea. So maybe a quadratic approximation might be a better idea. And also the so last one I want to prove some convergence of law path with the estimate I mean so dynamics compared to the um, effective um, dynamics. Hopefully, so these two um, are only epsilon differences. Okay, so so that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal. And, and it's, it's, so in fact, that's what we see right here. I mean, you can see the result is pretty, I mean, pretty accurate. Um, so hopefully we can prove some stronger um, so result from that. Okay, thank you, everyone.